Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. So this week's video is going to be on light pollution filters, specifically the Skytech L Pro Max filter and the Altair Astro Tri-Band filter. So a few, of my, a few of you have guessed where I actually live and it's Birmingham and Birmingham is like the second largest city in the UK, although Sometimes Manchester does debate that, but regardless, I have some serious light pollution going on. So a lot, good light pollution filter is pretty much a necess necessity for me. I can't even speak today. <laughs> so I actually use two, not at the same time, um, the L Pro Max and the Tri-Band. I use them for different targets because they both have different applications and I'm going to discuss a little bit about that in this video and on the odd occasion I'll shoot data with the L Pro and the Tri-Band filter and then combine it together and I'll show you that image too. So let's get into the video and I'll show you some example images and we can discuss the differences between these filters and what they're good for and what they're not so good for. So. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. First things first, let's take a look at the Skytech L Pro Max filter. I brought this filter a couple of years ago, maybe, yeah, nearly there, from um, Altair Astro. And it's probably my most used filter because you can use it for absolutely everything, including visual. So if I open the box, it's a well-worn box because I use it all the time. You get the filter inside as normal in a nice little box. And it's got like a pinky greeny tinge. So pop that back in there, two inch filter. But it's the box I'm most interested in. So the box actually has a copy of the transmission spectrum on it. So these orange areas are sort of city lights and air glow that we don't want. These white areas are the wavelengths from nebulas. And this purple shaded area is all the transmission through. So basically that's where the max bit comes from because it's letting through the maximum amount of light with, while still cutting out all the nasties. This thing's got an anti-reflection and a UV IR block on as well, which is always useful, especially when you use it in a colour camera to prevent star bloating. And to be honest, it's just a great filter for sort of cutting out nasty light pollution. And I've even cut out a bit of moon glow with it. And keeping your star colours natural as well. I tend to use this for galaxies, in fact I would probably start calling it a galaxy filter. Nebulas, reflection nebulas, star clusters, globular clusters, emission nebulas, literally you can use this thing for everything. And now I'll show you an example of an image of a galaxy taken with the SkyTech. L Pro Max filter. According to Altair themselves, the Max stands for stands for UV, IR block, and AR coatings. AR being anti-reflection, which gives more natural colours than a UHC or CLS filters and allowing some starlight through for sort of natural colours while still blocking the major bits of light pollution. It's perfect for galaxies and broadband emitters so if you're going to shoot the Pleiades please don't do it with a narrowband filter or a CLS filter because you won't be very happy. Choose a Skytech L Pro Max filter instead. And this thing, it also comes in a DSLR clip in form as well. So it's useful for nightscapes if you're shooting with a DSLR. 
So all in all, if you were to buy one filter first to be a light pollution filter, I would go for the Skytech L Pro Max. Little note, I actually have LED street lighting as well and I've not had any bother with this filter and my LED street lights either. So, on to the tri-band filter. So, this is the Altair tri-band filter, it's in a bit of a dog-eared box because this was a pre-production um, one that I bought. They did a sort of kickstarter and I was like, yeah, I'm having a bit of that. So the tri-band, instantly you can see from the transmission spectrum, it's a lot narrower. These peaks here being oxygen and hydrogen beta and hydrogen alpha further up. But it also has UV IR block and an anti-reflection coating. Now, instantly, because of the lack of transmission everywhere else, I wouldn't use this for a broadband emitter such as a galaxy or a reflection nebula. This is mainly for emission nebulas. So I'm talking about nebulas like the North American Nebula, the Orion Nebula, anything that is being ionized by those stars that are being created in them and glowing with like hydrogen alpha and oxygen three wavelengths. This thing will cut out masses of light pollution instantly and thus your because it's cutting out light pollution it's also cutting down on other light as well and so your exposures will need to increase in length. But the trade-off is you cut out a load of light pollution and you get sort of increased detail in your images of these kinds of nebulas. So I'll show you an example of an image with the tri-band filter now. Another question I've been asked is can you treat the tri-band or quad-band filter like a narrowband filter such as a hydrogen alpha filter? The question, the answer is yes. And I've actually shot the Horsehead Nebula with a good chunk of subs being taken with the L Pro Max filter to get the star colour and some natural colours in the nebula. And then I have shot some data with the Altair Tri-Band filter. And then when I've stacked it in Astro Pixel Processor, I've extracted the hydrogen alpha only and that has been my hydrogen alpha image and then I've combined my RGB image with my hydrogen alpha image to make a HARGB composite and I'm going to show you that composite image now. Got my rig here guys and changing filters sort of halfway through an imaging run isn't that hard because I use the Altair filter drawer. This thing's got little magnets to hold it in place, you just screw the filter on and then slide it back in nice and securely like so. That way I can start off doing RGB or HA alpha exposures and then swap halfway through. In short, to recap, I use the Skytech L Pro Max for my RGB broadband filter. So we're talking galaxies, nebulas, um, globular clusters, star clusters, anything where you want natural colour to come through. And I use my Altair tri-band filter as a sort of narrowband filter, so hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3, 
stacking them separately, extracting HA or extracting O3 only, and also, you know, to make composite with the RGB data from the Sky Pro L. Sky Tech L Pro Max filter. As always, thanks for watching. I hope this video has been useful and let me know what filters you guys use and let's have a discussion and I'll catch you for the next video.